Well, you, you, clients, as, as you know, is the most important asset for any law firm. So law firm need to basically cater for the clients, whatever they uh, need in terms of reaching to the clients. We do this in marketing, we do in, in trying to reach out to new clients and keeping our existing clients. And by us moving to the same direction where the client is going, we're going to have clients in the uh, medical field, in banking, in technology. They all are moving into a different style of communicating and they expect their works to be done in a different way. They also very much cost concern and this is where we basically have to be able to cater to the client, to provide them with the legal advice, be in a constant communication with them, move in the same style they expect the advice or the uh, 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 reporting on the cases that comes to them and then be able to also reduce their cost because they are very much becoming worldwide cost conscious and with the innovation and with technology we can become closer to client and this is a subject that we talk about it every day in the office that we need to be very close to clients because they are basically our uh, 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 assets where we earn our money from them and they're our customers in, 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 a, in a marketing terms and by us becoming closer to them by the use of technology and by us providing uh, advices that can reach them faster and with a less cost, whether by uh, le leaning down on, 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 on the new style of uh, communication or IT intelligence or the way we research things internally in the office, the clients will get a better advice, faster advice, and they will become very much closer to the firm where we will basically uh, hope to continue that good relationship. Yep, I agree 100%. Uh, it is all about the client. That's what our business is about. And at the end of the day, with um, more innov innovative technology and the use thereof by clients, we as um, in-house, as private practice lawyers, we need to give them added value, something more, because anyone can get legal advice from anywhere these days. So what will differentiate us is an understanding of their business, of what's going to happen to their business over the next five to 10 years, an understanding of how they have, as Isam said, all become much more cost conscious today, and therefore we need to add value, not just by giving legal advice, but by becoming their trusted advisors, by giving them something extra that other lawyers cannot give, perhaps, or by adding value in terms of understanding what type of technology they are going to need and how it's going to affect their businesses over the next coming years. And the way we see it, by the way, and this is very important, you know, sometimes when you're talking about reducing costs, you compromise on quality. And with the technology and the use of technology today, you actually become more precise. You can actually go through thousands and thousands of pages and research on judgments and research on precedents and going into uh, a, a different contract. So the quality actually enhance and at the same time you cut um, costs by uh, cutting on the wastage of time you have to look in this. So that's the direction that the legal profession is going to, is not only in, uh, uh, enhancing the quality of the work, but also reducing the work, which is basically a two lines which was very difficult to achieve without the technology. It's a big impact on clients. Um, clients today, First of all, they've increased their in-house teams. There's many more of them in order to reduce um, costs. They're using alternative procurement service providers for legal services today. They're using technology um, to, in order to um, mitigate risk and to, in order to cut costs. So we need to be aware of that and we need to be able to provide them that added value that we, we discussed earlier. Um, in order to, to keep pace with their developments. We really need an understanding of 
the client's uh, sensitivities around costs and around legal fees. We need to be flexible in our legal fees and our approach to legal fees. I think that's very important. I'll add a different angle to what uh, Just Fatun said as well, which I agree with everything she said. Clients today, in addition to what we talked about, the costs and what the expectation, clients are moving fast, different industries moving at a different pace. Uh, we cater for different clients, whether those in shipping, banking, medical, elsewhere. And unless you basically fly at the same altitude, they have a choice to go elsewhere. Uh, legal advisors today is going to be global. You have law firms um, from all over the world give advisors on small countries and big countries and they be able to research a small matters in, in, in the UAE and Saudi and Kuwait and elsewhere. And unless basically you are on the same speed uh, as your clients and you fly at the same altitude and reaching to the clients through their systems, through their iPad, through their mobile, communicating with them. Clients basically maybe two, three years ago, they were happy if you report to them about their cases in courts in a matter of a day or two. I don't think the future clients will accept this. The new generation clients who are now today 16 and 17 year olds expect they're basically getting a message or a report or even having access to their file electronically at your law firm. He can basically log in and, and I look at his cases. So the communication style and the communication tool has changed on lawyers and lawyers need to adopt this. Yes, the legal profession may be not as fast as um, um, uh, other industries similar to banking or, 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 or med medicine where they have moved into this, but definitely most of the uh, big players in the legal field and law firms very conscientious about the changes and they are making investments whether in the human um, intelligence that internally or the investments internally to be able to provide the client the service that they need and fly the same altitude otherwise the client has a choice to go elsewhere. Um, lawyers in general, traditional around the world, they were late in coming into technology, but it's a big subject today and a huge investment in every law firm, including ours. I think Dubai is probably different from the region because of the leadership we have here and because of the government's drive to try to encourage people to move into technology and try to incorporate technology as part of there. I mean, there is a huge move within the governments here and we now to connect with the government we have to be electronics uh, whether the courts or the uh, licensing departments to set up companies whether at the DIFC level or the Dubai Economic Lib Department's level and therefore the government here has been a very good um, uh, drivers behind the private sector and government sector to encourage them to move into this. So there is a huge move that's happening. Not all law firms have invested in this. There's some law firm, small law firm because of their size and the size of the investments that they require. They lag in behind. But most of the sizable firm, local or international, technology is a huge issue on their platform. And I actually expect a huge changes in the next three to five years in, in the legal profession here locally whether the way we communicate with the clients or whether, whether the way we do things internally, uh, whether the contract we draft or the advice we render to clients. I agree with that. I think especially in the UAE, uh, there's, there's a, a drive um, on the part of the private sector led by the government. I think more needs to be done, but it is happening. Uh, when you talk the region, um, I'm, I'm referring to the UAE mostly. As Isam said, I think the other uh, countries in, in the MENA region are lagging behind. I think that lawyers, law firms, um, those people at the top of law firms need to break down their fear of what's coming, their fear of change, their fear of technology. And once um, they understand that this is going to be a good thing for them, that this is going to keep them in the game, that this is going to help them then they will move forward just as El Tamimi has and other law firms in, in the UAE. But the good news about this though, that's other, and as Dubai and the UAE has been um, always the uh, uh, inspire for neighboring countries to turn from uh, the good things about neighboring law firms, those who basically exist in the, in, in the region, they don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, they don't have to learn from the mistakes which we're probably going to face. And in, in any new things, you're basically going to have to uh, tr try something and there is a, a ways of doing things better and you need to do it better. And once 
the law firms in the UAE has basically embraced fully through the IT system, the artificial intelligence, and be able to use some of the uh, platform that's currently available where you could link up and try to utilize some of your information data contract research. And I think the neighboring law firms can learn from the ways thing. And that's the beauty of uh, uh, the IT uh, world today. Uh, no one has it for its own. Uh, you know, people basically innovate and it can easily spread around and people learn from, from it and we're learning from a different industry as we speak today. I see a big change is happening. I think that the first premise that we have to build upon is it's not just an investment in IT. That's not enough. It's not just pouring lots of money into new technologies and innovation. It's also an investment in your people. And you have to change the fundamental culture of lawyers and the firm before you invest in IT. Empower your people. Um, let them learn. Uh, send them out on courses. Let them understand what the technologies are about and how to use them. Let them learn about blockchain, about all these other things that, that are coming out now and that, that we're facing. The law firm of the future has to be a law firm that empowers its people, that changes its mindset and that also invests in innovative technologies and understands the client's needs and requirements. So in the future, we're going to be advising a client on blockchain technology and whether or not it, the coding of that blockchain was right. And those kinds of elements in the future is what we need. And we're going to be sending our lawyers on coding courses and teaching them how to, how to uh, code smart contracts and all these other things. And that's what I think. It's an empowerment, a uh, two-pronged empowerment, an empowerment of your people and an empowerment of your technolo technological abilities. Well, the law firm of the future is not going to be me. Uh, uh, that's for sure, uh, uh, because I'm not uh, from that future. But I'm going to help the firm to reach that stage because it's definitely we have to be there if we want to continue to exist and be competitive in the market. The law firm of the future or the hospital of the future or the basically the government of the future, you should look at in the eyes and the habits of the 14, 15 years old kids today, male or female. Those are the future. You see what they do? what they're interested in, their interest has shifted, the way they basically they operate has shifted, the way they communicate shifts, and those are going to be the CEOs and the chairman of the companies that you're going to operate with, and you need to cater for them. So there will be, there'll be two parallel moves the law firm has to move. Move internally to change the culture in a similar fashion to what Fatun has just, change the culture of your lawyers. You know, dictation today, the quality of the dictation has improved a lot. Just imagine what's going to happen in five, six years. The secretary, the role of the secretary is going to go. Maybe the role of the reception is going to go where you basically have everything automated. Maybe the role of the conference rooms doesn't exist. You can communicate with the clients over the phone and video conferencing anywhere you want. He's in his office. He doesn't have to come to you and you don't have to, co to come to him. And the ways of which office operate, the block of these buildings and office and occupying three, five, ten floors is going to change. All this is, 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 is new to me and I'll have to adapt to it. It's probably not new to my children. Those basically going to fit in very well into the future of this firm. We're going to basically cut time, cut wastage of time, lower cost, and we'll probably be able to earn more money and do more works within the same hours and instead of accomplishing and dealing with one file you could actually deal with multiple file and you'll be multiple tasks and that's the beauty of the future which is actually going to be a good news for all of us thank you very much You're thank welcome. you appreciate You're it thank welcome. you